because God is love. So let us listen attentively to his word, and let us humbly pray to him that he may grant you your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. A reading from the book of Sirach. Blessed the husband of a good wife, twice lengthened are his days. A worthy wife brings joy to her husband, peaceful and full is his life. A good wife is a generous gift bestowed upon him who fears the Lord. Be he rich or poor, his heart is content, and a smile is ever on his face. A gracious wife delights her husband, her thoughtfulness puts flesh on his bones. A gift from the Lord is her governed speech, and her firm virtue is of surpassing worth. Choicest of blessings is a modest wife, priceless her chaste soul. A holy and decent woman adds grace upon grace. Indeed, no price is worthy of her temperate soul. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heavens, the beauty of a virtuous wife is the radiance of her home. The word of the Lord. Thanks be A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ethiopians. Brothers and sisters, live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself 
the savior of the body, and as the church is subordinate to Christ. So wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to signify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word. He might present to himself the church in splendor without a spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy without blemish. She also, her husbands, should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the thought floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand the rains fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as one of their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Rodney, Katie, thank you for honoring me and honoring us by inviting us to the celebration of your joining yourselves in a covenant relationship. And marriage is that, a covenant. And covenant always involves sacrifice. And you don't give up a little. You give your entire self. It's the difference between covenant and contract. See, covenant, in a covenant, kinship is formed. Relationships, families are built on covenant. And they come through the total surrender of self. And that sacrifice 
I've got a pastor back at home who taught Greek for many years and says the word that we use for love throughout the Bible, with a few exceptions, is agape. And that word indicates not just a fondness or an attraction, but a self-giving, sacrificial love. Thomas Aquinas put it this way, that the definition of love, to love is to desire, is to will the good of the other, without regard for your own wants and desires. That's why today you have come here, you, you have begun, frankly, your steps in love together. You've spent time with each other. You've been together for some period of time. You've grown to know and love each other. But you're kicking it up to a whole new level through marriage. Because you, you, you had a great deal of guts you've showed uh, because folks, you know that second reading, you know, where everybody cringed, you know, where everybody gets a little, wives be submissive to your husband, and everybody gets a little uncomfortable. Uh, they went with the full reading. A lot of times that's left out, but I want to focus on the other part of it, on Rodney's responsibilities as well. You see, it, it's that, that sense of the husband is the head of the family. If anybody had seen my big fat Greek wedding, you may recall a bit in there that this bit was alluded to, said the husband, you know, the man is the head of the family. And she replied, yes, but I'm the neck and I can turn him any way I want to. <laughs> a similar thing happened when Cardinal George was first appointed to Chicago, when he was first named Archbishop of Chicago, I recall, that he would, there was an interview and he was actually on the lawns at St. Giles at an Oak Park. And one of the talking heads from TV said, well, now as leader of the church in Chicago, wait, 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 I'm not the leader of the church. Cardinal George corrected him. He said, no, I'm the head of the church. And they go, well, what's the difference? He said, the job of the head is to see that the body gets whatever it needs. If you're hungry and starving, your stomach may be the leader of the body at that time. And the job of the head is to see that it gets what it needs to be sustained. If you're in pain or hurt, it's the job of the head to see that those are tended to. It's a mutual relationship between the two. So you've come together to love one another, to grow in love. And it's not always going to be easy. Because in your vows, we're going to remind you, for better or worse, for in sickness and in health, it goes both ways. And greatest love, most times, is shown when times are not easy. There was a sign we had at the office where I used to work. It was above the copier in the parish that I went there. And it was just a little thing that said, I asked Jesus how much he loved me. And he stretched out his arms and he died. Love is sacrificial. And I'll seal again from my pastor, the most important word in the readings that you heard today is the shortest word, as. You should love one another as Christ loved the church. You're to love each other as Christ loved. How did he love? We see with the crucifix over there. He loved to the death. He loved to the point that he give, gave up everything for his beloved. Today we gather as friends and family, and we're part of this because we're committing ourselves to be here to support you through your lives that whether it's family or friends, we're here assembled with great joy and we have every wish and dream that we care to offer for you and we are just so excited today. But as you begin this, do so with the sense of, yes, I'm ready to commit myself fully to my beloved. 
and I need nothing back in return. But it's always great to have the knowledge that by beginning in a sacramental union, you're uniting yourself with the Lord, and all things happen through Christ. So may the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, guide you on this day throughout your lives in the good times and the bad. And may this be the first of many, many blessed days for you. Amen. I would like to invite Rodney and Katie and Aaron and Maggie to join us. Yeah, that's fine. I'll try not to breathe on you too hard. Okay. <laughs> Dearly beloved, you have come here before a minister of the church and in the presence of the community so that your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal and your love be enriched with his blessing so that you may have strength to be faithful to each other forever and to assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Rodney, Katie, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children <laughs> lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and His Church? I am. Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, I invite you to join your right hands, turn toward each other, and declare your consent before God and His Church. Rodney, do you take Katie to be your wife? Do you promise to be faithful to her in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love her and to honor her all the days of your life? I do. And Katie, do you take Rodney to be your husband? Do you promise to be faithful to him in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love him and to honor him all the days of your life? I do. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together let no one put us under. Aaron, if you could hold the tray. And may the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. <laughs> Rodney, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. And now we would like to offer our prayers for the couple. As we call together, call to mind the special gift of grace and charity by which God has been pleased to crown and consecrate the love of our sister Katie and our brother Rodney. Let us commend them to the Lord. So the response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For this bride and groom and for the well-being for their well-being as a family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the relatives and friends, and for all who have assisted this couple, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people preparing to enter marriage, 
and for all whom the Lord is calling to another state in life. Let us pray to the Lord. For all families throughout the world and for lasting peace among all people, let us pray to the Lord. For all members of our families who have passed from this world and for all of the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For the church, the holy people of God, and for unity among all Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, who are present in our midst, as Rodney and Katie seal their union, accept our prayer and fill us with your spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Now let us humbly invoke God's blessing upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the bond of marriage. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, who created man and woman in your own image and willed that their union be crowned with your blessing, we humbly beseech you for these your servants who are joined today in the marriage covenant. May your abundant blessing, Lord, come down upon this bride and upon her husband, her companion for life. May the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may be known for the integrity of their conduct and be recognized as virtuous parents. Amen. In happiness may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow may they seek you out. May they have their, the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surrounds them, may they come to the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, all of you who are gathered here, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I would like you to recognize the, the newly joined together Dr. and Mrs. Rodney Lalonde, and they may engage in a whatever public display of affection they feel is appropriate. <laughs>